I was about to enter the hallways of West Columbus High School in Cerro Gordo, North Carolina. And it was at that time that, you know, school went, was, went well for me. I made good grades. I was on the principal's list. I received some accolades while I was there. <laughs> and then graduation came. And it was an opportunity for me to reflect and look at those great years. Some things happened that I really don't care to talk about. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. And then there were other things that happened that I'm willing to share. And so then we, it was time for me to make that long trek to the great University of North Carolina State University, Wolfpack Pride. <laughs> and I stayed there for four years, and we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> you don't need to know any details. And so I graduated from North Carolina State University with a bachelor's in secondary, excuse me, secondary education, mathematics. And so then I walked through the doors of Fuquay Verena High School in Fuquay Verena, North Carolina. And it was at that time where, you know, I experienced learning, but I thought that, you know, now it's time for me to teach. But oh, was I surprised, because it was then that I truly learned. How many of you can, can relate to that? And so we moved on from Fuquay Verena High School to Cary High School, where I served as an administrator. And I learned even more. And so the journey continued. And then it came to the point where I entered the doors of North Carolina New Schools Project. And it was all about a different way of teaching a different way of instructing students. And so the journey still continued. I get a kick out of sharing what I've learned. And I also get a kick out of gleaning from those who are willing to share. And that's where we are. Our journey continues. It never ends. And it's up to us to make the best of it. And so now, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'd like to bring to the stage Amelia Hawkins. Amelia Hawkins is a recent graduate of Caldwell Early College High School. And she is going to share with us her personal journey. Please help me at this time as we welcome to the stage Amelia Hawkins. Project for inviting me to share my story with you. I realize that a lot of work has gone into forming the path I've taken, and I appreciate all of the people who have helped me get to where I am. December 1st, 2011, I refreshed my email for the thousandth time that day to realize that my dreams had come to fruition. The word congratulations jumps off the screen. After reading the same sentence three times, I had to let go of a squeal. I am officially Princeton bound. Other people dream of getting married, having babies, and buying a house. But since I was introduced to the shadowy concept of college, I've dreamed of attending and of taking part in this one magical thing that would somehow allow me to work my way toward a stable and secure life. Looking back, I realized that I've spent a lot of time pushing my way over, around, and through obstacles while working toward my goals. My journey to the Ivy League is not like that of the majority of Harvard or Princeton incoming freshmen. I was raised by a single mother with my younger half-brother. Until I was six, I thought that alcoholism and drug use were the norm. 
I thought that hurtful, abusive relationships were commonplace. And I thought that life had to be a constant turmoil. Moving from small town to small town from state to state makes it difficult to form lasting relationships that could have given me a healthier and more positive view of life. I coped by slipping into worlds open by popular fiction, reading about the magical world of Harry Potter or the miserable lives of the Baudelaire orphans put my life on hold for a while. By the time I hit middle school, I discovered an almost feverish passion for academics. Maybe because school allowed me to get away from home, or maybe because classwork was something I could do correctly. I applied and entered Cobble Early College High School as a freshman because I knew I couldn't pay for college on my own. But the early college turned out to be more than just a way to pay for an education. High school was a new ball of wax for me. I was used to and enjoyed the traditional classroom learning style with lectures and tests. My school uses team-based and project-based learning with a lot of group work and presentations, which was very difficult for an independent worker like me to adjust to. When a new group project was introduced, a small part of my soul always died. <laughs> but I recognized the non-traditional high school classes helped me broaden my learning styles and communication abilities by giving me experiences working with others. My school, Cobble Early College High School, became a support system. My school gave me confidence. My school helped me realize my dreams. Cobble Early College has been a blessing for me and has helped me to understand what college can mean and what it can do for a person. My classes have taught me to take responsibility for my own education, ask questions when I'm experiencing difficulty, and enjoy learning on an independent and college-based level. Three years ago, another move loomed on the horizon. With the financial wolf at the door, my mom had to relocate again. Not a move to a nearby county, not even a move within the state, a move that would take us out of North Carolina and away from Lenore, Cobble County, and Cobble Early College High School. But I had a choice to make, and not wanting to leave my school, I chose to move in with a friend and continue attending Cobble Early College. Though the decision hurt, it was a good one. My acceptance into Princeton has become one of those defining moments. You know, everything I've experienced suddenly falls under BPA before Princeton admission <laughs> or APA after Princeton admission. I'm no longer the slightly odd, slightly surly girl who always sits in the second row and can't stop herself from vomiting answers to every question presented by the teacher in class. People suddenly treat me differently and it's weird because I was actually okay with being treated like a number. Throughout my journey, I discovered that when we lose sight of our dreams, we lose hope. I've been depressed, and I've been racked with anxiety. I've wanted to give up. When I was little, listening to fight after argument after fight, I made prepara preparation lists for the day I would run away. When I was older, I thought about drinking or snorting myself into oblivion. But for one reason or another, I didn't. And I learned what it was like to survive one day, then survive one day, then survive one day until I reached my goals. The work that you are doing in your schools helps your students reach their own goals as well. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy your conference. All right, go to your conference, have a good time. What do you say? I mean, my gosh, Amelia, thank you so much for sharing that story again. Um, it's truly a, a testament to that individual, Amelia, but also to all of you for all the work that you do every day in our schools to make the stories of Amelia more the norm than the exception. And so I'd like for you all to take a second and just give yourselves a round of applause as well. Okay, so I'm not going to turn around because I hate being up here and being that big on a TV. And there's no monitor down there. Here I am here too. It's very scary. Um, my name is Dana Deese Walls. I think I'm the first to say that. And I'm the Vice President for School and District Development at the North Carolina Day School Project. And have the opportunity to work with all of you and great staff 
to bring you this conference and many other learning opportunities, and we're excited to be here with you today. Before I start, I'd like to give special recognition to BB&T, who is one of our sponsors, and we'll be talking more throughout the week about the fantastic work they're doing to support us as we move in a new direction for leadership development. Um, very exciting stuff, particularly for principals, but eventually for teachers as leaders and district office representatives as well. Um, as Dee really just sort of knocked the socks off of a personal journey um, as our theme, uh, my staff encouraged me to share some of my personal journey, which is tough because they'll say on Monday morning, what'd you do this weekend, Dana? Not much. <laughs> sort of my open and sharing friendly way. Um, so talking about sharing a personal journey in front of 700 people, sure, it's going to be real personal. Um, but I was <laughs> talk to you a little bit about um, my experience in high school was um, interesting. I managed to graduate last in my class, and that only happened because those teachers could not bear the thought of little Dana Diesel coming back for another year. So I had co classes, really, I think I got credit for them, that included mopping the gym floor. <laughs> it was good, because I was an athlete. I was, I was good with that. And independent studies and photography, you know, those types of things. So anyway, I, I managed to graduate. But really, I would not have. I would have dropped out. I just had two parents, very fortunate, that would have hunted me down and killed me had I dropped out. So I decided life before death. However, uh, my dad also had a rule that um, he would pay for um, all of his children, the four of us, uh, to go through college because he had had that opportunity to be the first in his family to do so because of the GI Bill. But the rule was, if you went and then dropped off, you were off the dole, is what he would always say. No going back. You make that choice, you're off the dole. Off the dole, he would say. I'm going. And so somehow I got in. And off I went for a year and dropped off, out, and I was, I really was, great choice. Um, so I went back uh, again on, on my own dime and dropped out again, um, and, but went off to do something that was important to me, ran my own business for uh, about eight years, uh, married, relocated, and then found that I really thought I might want to coach and that teach, and that, that would require certification. So went back to college, graduated for the first time with a bachelor's degree at age 31, and then spent a lot of other time collecting a couple other degrees. Um, but I think the most important thing of all that collection of degrees for me was really this opportunity to work in public education. Because I quickly saw, working with uh, the students that I did work with, um, that I individually and my organization as a school or a district or now the North Carolina New Schools Project has the opportunity, in fact, has the responsibility to transform young people's lives. And I know that's what draw many of you to the public schooling forum and many of you to the North Carolina New Schools Project is this opportunity to transform lives. Um, we're gonna take a look at three other voices from our schools and get you the opportunity to weigh in a little bit about what you see of these students and their experiences. So first video, please. 